hey guys in this video we're going to be looking at calculating relative isotopic mass or why are the mass numbers on the periodic table not whole numbers we're going to start off with the GCFC content and then towards the end of the video there's going to be a level content timestamps for everything are going to be in the description below have you ever wondered about the mass numbers on the periodic table chlorine is 35.5 and carbon is 12. Now we know the mass numbers are made up of protons plus neutrons so how has chlorine got half a neutron? Why is it not a whole number? Part of this is all to do with understanding of our definitions. Mass number is not just the number of protons plus the number of neutrons the mass number is the average mass of all of the different occurring isotopes of an element. Chlorine has two naturally occurring isotopes. Chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. And the mass that we see on the periodic table, 35.5, is an, is an average of the percentage of these two isotopes. Chlorine is found as two naturally occurring isotopes, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. 75% of the chlorine is chlorine 35 and 25% is chlorine 37. Calculate the relative atomic mass of chlorine from its isotopes. If we summarise the information from the question, 25% is chlorine 37 and 75% is chlorine 35 and these add up to 100%. That makes our lives nice and easy because what we are actually looking for is the average mass of these and we can say we're looking for the average mass of 100 atoms. So we had 100 atoms and 25 of them weighed 37 and 75 of them weighed 35. We could add all of these together and divide them by the number of atoms, divide them by 100, giving us 35.5 as the average mass. Bromine is found as 50% bromine 79 and 50% bromine 81. What is the average relative atomic mass? Again, we can assume we have 100 atoms of bromine and that 50 of them are going to have a mass of 79 and 50 of them are going to have a mass of 81. So we can put that on the top, 50 times 79 plus 50 times 81 all over 100, it gives 8,000 over 100, which would give us an average of 80. And this is the value we see on the periodic table. Iron can be found as four naturally occurring isotopes. The most common, iron 56 and 91.6%, followed by iron 54, iron 57, and iron 58. What is the relative isotopic mass of iron? Now, a few different isotopes here, but we treat it exactly the same, all over 100. The most common isotope, 96.1 times 56 plus the next isotope 55.9 times 54 plus 2.2 times 57 plus 0.2 times 58. Following bid mass do that all over 100. Giving us the number we see on the periodic table of 55.8. Calcium can be found as a wide range of isotopes. The highest percentage is calcium 40, followed by calcium 44, calcium 42, calcium 48, and calcium 43. What is the relative atomic mass? Now there are five different isotopes here. We do it exactly the same way as a percentage, or we can think of it assuming we had 100 atoms. 96.9 times 40 plus 2.0 times 44 plus 0 0.8 times 42 
plus 0 0.2 times 48 plus 0 0.1 times 43 all over 100 following beard mass giving us an average relative mass of 40.12 Iridium is listed on the periodic table as having a mass of 192.2 and it has two naturally occurring isotopes, iridium-191 and iridium-193. What are the relative percentages? Now for this we need algebra and this question is going to be our GCSE A-level crossover. I would say this is a hard GCSE question but it is a relatively easy A-level question. And we need to be thinking with our mass heads on and do algebra because this is the working out it in reverse. So we can say the percentage of iridium-191 we can call x. Now we know there are two isotopes, so iridium-193 must be 100 minus x. Now we have names for our two isotopes, values for our two isotopes. It is 191 times the number of those, which is x, plus 193 times the number of those, which is 100, minus x, all over 100, gives us 192.2. We can now use algebra to tidy this up. So 193 times 100 gives us 19,300 minus 193x, over 100 equals 192.2. 191x plus 19,300 minus 193x equals 19,220. We can take away 19,300 from each side, giving us 191x minus 193x equals minus 80. So we can tie that up further to give us minus 2x equals minus 80, so x equals 40. Now the answer isn't x equals 40 because that wasn't what the question was asking. The question was asking the relative percentages. So we need to do an extra step, the bit that lots of people forget, and go back to the question and say that there is 40% Iridium-191 and 60% Iridium-193. Often you'll be given mass spec data and asked to determine the relative atomic mass. This is for neon, and you can see that the MZ of 20 we have 90% and MZ of 22 we have relative runs of 10%. So 90% of the atoms in the sample had a mass of 20 and 10% of the atoms within the sample had a mass of 22. Now we have this data from the graph. We can read it exactly the same way and do all of this over 100. So 90 times 20 plus 10 times 22 over 100 will give us a relative atomic mass of 20.2. Another example here for boron. Boron, we can see there are 20% of them have a mass of 10, and 80% of the atoms within a sample had a mass of 11. It is always good to take the data from the graph and then rewrite it in shorthand note formation so it's easier for you to interpret, easier for you to pull out the information that you need later on. Doing all of that maths will give us an answer of 10.8. The mass spec for sulphate is a touch more complicated and what you might see is that they've actually written the values onto the graph for you. So we have 94% sulphur 32, 0.75% sulphur 33, 4.25% sulphur 34 and then 1% sulphur 36. These numbers can be used in exactly the same way to determine the relative mass. 
all of that over 100 and for these questions it is especially important to show all of your working so you can pick up all of the marks if you make a mistake when you're using your calculator or if you miss one of the isotopes out giving us 32.13 as the relative mass.